If you're anything like me, you find yourself thinking about guitars and how they're constructed all the time. And to that end, my wife and I bought my son these little magnets, and they call them rattlesnake eggs. They're a simple little toy that's just designed to be like kind of slung together and make a little fun noise. And like most dads, I found myself constantly messing with them, just kind of like dozing off, watching TV. I even like was driving in my car with them in my hands one day. And what I noticed was that there's actually a really cool physics principle that um, that this is doing, and it's called the conservation of energy, which basically, in layman's terms, is the idea that energy in an isolated system remains constant, but if you have a system that is not isolated, you have a, a drop-off in the amount of energy inside of it because it's being wasted on other things. And so, to that end, Let's imagine for just a second that this lower magnet is the sides of the guitar and that this upper magnet is the soundboard. If I introduce a vibration into this and I'm very loosely gripping what I'm considering the sides, watch how much this vibrates. A lot of the energy is being wasted in, in this experiment by the sides, and once again. Now, let's imagine I tightly grip the sides It's like 10 times the amount of time that it's vibrating. And to me, that was just like, holy cow, like how can we take that and apply it to the guitar building? So I did a little bit of research and I found out that there's actually a way that I can go about making my sides in a much better way. And uh, I'm gonna show that to you guys here. So those of you guys who don't remember, we're actually gonna be making this guitar out of this really awesome set of African ebony. And it had like a shellac on it. And I just sanded that off and I'm super excited about the look of it. It's got these nice little, little patchy streaks inside of it. So it's gonna look good. So I've actually run them through the drum sander in preparation for bending. And I took them to about two and a quarter millimeters. Um, and that's about 90 thousandths for you imperial users which is always just such a presumptuous word imperial <laughs> but um so what we need to do is actually bend these sides um will who i'm building this guitar for actually i kind of talked him into not doing a cutaway i don't like doing cutaways on these ancient sika guitars just because we've only got a limited amount of this wood and i don't want to remove any of it so it's going to be a pretty simple bend up here this isn't going to be a lot different than what you've seen on any other guitar up into we get to the next step, but the first one is to just bend up the sides using this LMI bending machine. So for some of you guys might hold your nose and go, well, that's not really the, the real way to do it. But um, when you build a lot of guitars for a living, you don't want to be doing them by hand. And I built, bent them by hand for years. So I do know how to do that. But for now, we're gonna use this LMI bending machine. And the process here is pretty simple. All we're gonna do is spray the wood with some water. Some people soak them. I don't find that there's really a need for that. I've never had issues with wood splitting. <laughs> I, bent the, I broke the crap out of some binding, but I have yet to really break a side. Watch, we're gonna break this one now. <laughs> so the next step is to buy your own aluminum foil and not use your wife's. <laughs> if there's any tip that you can take away here is to buy your own shop aluminum foil because I don't know how she like, she'll hear this and my wife will hear this noise. <laughs> and that door opens up. You better not be using my aluminum foil. So I got my own. So now when she comes in, I can tell her, nope, my foil. <laughs> and uh, so the process with using a side bending machine is that we're actually going to take this and make a little, a little present here. First you want to mark the wood at its, uh, at its, waste point. I almost forgot to do that. So we're actually going to do that now. So we're going to find the location of where the waste is bent, which is about 30 to 35 millimeters on my guitar. So we'll probably err on the side of caution here and do like a 35 millimeter mark. I almost messed that up. <laughs> so now that we know where that mark is, we're actually going to wrap this. You notice that I haven't used a lot of, a lot of water here. I, I think that 
you can almost overdo it with the water. And this is not a figured set of wood and with unfigured wood you can be, uh, you're not as worried about breaking it. So I'm gonna transfer that pencil mark that I just did where the waste is gonna go to the outside. Easy peasy. Then, here's where the cool stuff happens. The reason why this side bender is so nice is because it kind of like creates this sandwich and really kind of supports the wood on all sides and allows you to get a really consistent bend. And so we're gonna just transfer, eh, we'll just draw it down. We're gonna transfer that side, that midpoint down here. And then we're gonna put the sandwich on top. We almost forgot this. We have a separate heat blanket just for the waste area. So that goes on top here. And then, and then we're just gonna clamp it all together with these little these little gator clamps that I have, just to kind of hold it all in place. So what we have is spring steel, the heat blanket, the actual side that's wrapped in aluminum foil and wet, and then one more heat blanket on the upper side here where the waste is gonna go. This whole thing then gets loaded into the side vendor, and we're gonna line up the waste area with where the waste clamp goes. And then we are ready to go. So we're gonna be rinsing and repeating this process on all of the side wood that we're gonna do. But, so the first thing we need to do is send a signal to this heat blanket that's just for the waste area. So we plug that thing up, and then we're gonna use a thermocouple, and that's just gonna go between the wood and the heat blanket, right where we're bending. And then, pretty straightforward here. I've got this set to 260 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll turn it on and what it's doing is sending uh, electricity to this heat blanket and then it can tell how hot it is and it's going to regulate whether it needs to send more electricity to it or turn off the electricity. I tend to wait till we get to about 210 degrees which is roughly boiling point um, and then I'll start to apply pressure but at first I kind of just give myself just a little bit of pressure on here so I know that we're getting a good reading on on the uh, digital readout there so patience is a virtue on this i just wait and then what i tend to do is as we get up to temperature which is obviously happening really quickly um we just sl start to slowly apply pressure to this thing and uh it depends on the species of wood um if i'm working with maple especially like a quilted maple or a flame maple i'm very careful um about being too fast with it because it can break um indian rosewoods ebony's like this African blackwoods, they don't tend to really have any issues with splitting, so you can kind of be a little bit quicker with it. But as we get to 200, you should start to hear a little bit of sizzle and cracking that you probably won't hear on camera. But that's, I usually wait till I hear that so then I know that I'm generating steam and then I start applying pressure. But the real advantage to the side bender versus doing it by hand, which there's hundreds of videos about doing that on, on YouTube, uh, but the real advantage here is that once it's done bending, is that I turn the machine off and it stays inside the mold while it cools off and gets back to room temperature. And what that does is I think it allows the wood to relax in its final shape. And then when I pull it out of the mold, we end up with a very stable piece. But we are just crossing boiling point. There we go. So now I'm gonna start applying just a little bit of pressure. And you might be able to see it, but there's just starting to be some steam coming up. crackle action mm. Snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> and this is kind of a feel thing you, you can just tell if the wood's pushing back on you at all this wood's not gonna have any snap no <laughs> this wood's not shouldn't have any issues at all uh, but we're just gonna apply a little bit of pressure here Let it rest for a second and uh, we'll keep bending. Yeah, I held off for years on buying a side bender. Um, I just kept doing it by hand because these things aren't cheap. But once I started kind of doing more than like five guitars a year, and really once I started building mostly guitars with really highly figured woods, I figured for the price of a really nice set of quilted maple, if I break it, it almost pays for the side bender. Um, so it made sense to me. Uh, 
you can make your own too. You don't have to get the LMI one. I'm more of a mindset, just buy it and be done with it kind of a guy. <laughs> now that we've got that fully down, we're actually gonna remove the power going to the side bending heating blanket and then transfer it over to the heating blanket that's the entire length of the sides. We're gonna apply another thermocouple to a spot that I know that I can trust between the sides and the heat blanket. And that's the important part is make sure that your thermocouple is actually on the right heat blanket. And we're gonna turn it on while it's heating up I'm going to apply these side bending uh, guides. All right, so the way that these side bender uh, guides actually work is you just kind of like twist them. They ride inside this inner rail here and you just slowly rotate it and it brings the sides down. And it's just a super really nice, elegant way of gradually bringing the sides down. And obviously the top um, bow, the upper bow is a little bit tighter of a radius. So we're just a little bit more careful with that. So I tend to do the bottom part first while this side is still heating up just to give it a little bit more elasticity. Um, the other nice thing about this side jig versus doing it by hand is because it's wrapped in aluminum foil, it, it keeps the steam inside of it and so that the wood doesn't dry out nearly as quickly. So I'm not nearly as concerned with like the wood being dry and then me cracking it because it's getting too hot. So we'll keep bringing that down. Gotta tighten that up a little bit. So this is pretty close to, as, about as close as you're gonna get to like having it the same as the factories at home. And if I had a different size guitar that I was gonna do, I'd just make a different size mold. So it's pretty straightforward. A little bit of work on the front end, having to make molds for different body sizes, but uh, totally worth it once you've made it because then you could just kinda just slap it in there and go to work. But I don't know if Matt can come over here and you can hear a little bit of this just to get the mic close. You'll hear like the steam coming out of it as we like a barbecued steak. <laughs> so we'll let it sit for just a second and I'll do one more so you can see the steam still coming out of it. I know I always stop bending if there's steam or if the steam stops because now I know the wood's probably getting too dry. So that's good. What I'll tend to do now is I used to a lot of times just turn the machine off at this point um, but what I have started doing is just letting this cook for about another five minutes and then I'll turn the machine off and let it cool off. So that's pretty much the process of bending aside. All right, so we have bent the sides and it's cooled off basically to room temperature. Yeah, if it's below 100 degrees, I call that good. That's Florida room temperature. <laughs> That's exactly Florida room temperature. Uh, I'm gonna pull this out. I wanna show you guys how this looks coming out of the mold and you'll see that it has some spring back to it, but uh, it's it's super gratifying, gratifying when, you, when you get the pulleys out of the mold. And if we're real careful, I can actually reuse the aluminum foil. So I try to like be careful with that just to save some waste and especially if I'm using my wife's aluminum foil. <laughs> so you can see how it's already like almost perfectly to size. It's got a little bit of spring back to it. See how flexible it is. But let's, uh, I did get a hole in my foil, so I'm gonna have to redo it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make use new foil. Yep, yeah. so what we're gonna do, we bent up that, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is LMI sells these already ready to go. These are their laminate side wood. This is Indian rosewood. It's at 80 thousandths thick, um, which, let me see. What is that for us metric people? That's two millimeters. Um, yeah, two millimeters thick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in the side bender and So now that we have that Indian rosewood all bent up, you can see how it's gonna fit together nicely with the exterior wood. So I wanna take this back to where we began this video and show you how much play there is in these sides. They're very they're very flimsy and they, they bend around. And same thing for this, they've got a lot of play in them. And so that goes back to the analogy of where we started this video, whereas if, I'm, if this is the sides and this is the top, because it's flimsy, and it wants to vibrate, it's gonna do that as opposed to making them incredibly stiff and then we end up with that. So what we wanna do is make these sides as stiff as possible. And so we're actually gonna laminate these together by putting them in, inside of a vacuum bag and using epoxy to get them to be perfectly sealed together. And you're gonna be amazed in the next episode when I do that, how much less play there is on this. I can actually take these sides and push down on them as hard as I want to and they almost don't move at all. You can bind that with both sides and then putting your neck block 
and your heel block on here. And what you end up with is a set of sides that are just incredibly rigid and only negligibly heavier. And uh, there's so many benefits to it. And out of all of the things I've ever done to an acoustic guitar to um, kind of take a step forward in its evolution of sound, this has been just the most mind blowing change in allowing my guitars to sound so much different. And then it's kind of counterintuitive in your mind, like making something less acoustically resonant. How can we make that make the guitar sound better? What we're gonna do is end this video here because the next step is a little bit more involved and we, wanna, we don't wanna make this too long. So in the next video, we're actually gonna put these in the bag and run you through that process and show you the finished product of how the sides look before we actually create the whole rim of the guitar. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope we've got your brain thinking a lot about how conservation of energy is a concept that we can apply to acoustic guitar building. And we'll see you in the next episode. Make sure that you do hit that like button and you subscribe, especially hit the bell if you're enjoying the journey of this 3,000 year old guitar. And we'll see you in the next episode, guys. Thanks.